When I was a teenager growing up in Scotland, being the only daughter amid four brothers, it was very much expected that when guests arrived, my role would be to assist my mother or even provide a meal or refreshment single-handedly. Often, if the visitors were my father's best friend and his wife, I yearned to listen as Willie and my father had interesting topical and political conversations. But sadly, I was frequently frustrated because domestic needs prevented me from sitting and listening. It's that kind of frustration that we witness in Martha's response to Mary sitting at Jesus' feet while she works steadily in the kitchen. But that's only a part of the story. Last week, we heard about the Good Samaritan, a story that reinforces the meaning of the command to love one's neighbour. And today, we see the complementary story of Martha and Mary that highlights the importance of devotion to the Lord's Word as an expression of our love for God. Jesus said to the lawyer, go and do, while today we see Jesus praise Mary for sitting and listening. The life of a disciple requires both. We as Christians thrive through both doing and being. So in looking at this story, it's important to recognize that Jesus doesn't set Martha and Mary's activities in opposition. One is not better than the other. At first glance, we witness two women who seem fairly ordinary. We're not told a huge about, about them, but what we see is two women of courage because both of them broke the boundaries of the cultural norms of the day. Martha appears to be the head of her household. We're not told, but it's possible that she was either a widow or unmarried. And in first century Judaism, she would have had virtually no position in society. Yet, she does the unthinkable thing. She invites this man, Jesus, into her home. A bold action that struck at the social and religious conventions of the day, an action that would have, deem, deemed, would have been deemed scandalous. And then there's her sister Mary, who appears totally disinterested in the domestic requirements, but is eager to listen as Jesus begins to teach. She sits at Jesus' feet in the place of a disciple and appears to be spellbound by his words. By sitting where she did, she too broke the boundary of the accepted norms because it was men who customarily sat at Jesus' feet and listened. It isn't difficult for us to imagine the scene as soon as Jesus entered the house, he began to teach. And Martha's first impulse was to get going in the kitchen. She was being faithful to the tradition of hospitality, a tradition begun long ago when Abraham welcomed three guests into his tent. It's easy to visualize Martha being completely distracted by her tasks, boiling water and chopping vegetables and preparing dinner, while Mary settled down quietly, 
at the feet of Jesus, transfixed by what he was saying. Who could possibly blame Martha for feeling put upon? I think we can almost hear her banging the pans and laying the plates down on the table with a hefty thump. And in some senses, what we see is a reflection of real life. One person's frustration because he or she feels that they're doing all the work, while the other person indulges herself or himself in quieter pursuits. But that said, we eventually see Martha's selfless tolerance reach its limits. And in her frustration, rather than complaining to her sister, she confronts Jesus and says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha wasn't just busy. She was distracted. She'd worked herself up into a state, and consequently had lost sight of the one she significantly called Lord. And in his response to her, we see Jesus gently tell her that there is need of only one thing to focus her attention on him. Each of us has God-given gifts, and it's through using those gifts that we thrive. We offer our love and service in so many different ways, and in doing that, we encourage and help others to thrive and to experience the joy of God's love. There is a strong, and beautiful tradition here at Christ Church Cathedral of providing hospitality and service to many. And it's done through preparing meals and organizing outreach to those in need or counting money through welcome and manning the reception desk and also providing beautiful flowers like this these. The, the list is endless, but there are also other disciples whose service is more contemplative through prayer and study and teaching and worship. Within this church, the active and the contemplative are balanced. They complement each other but it's important for all of us to remember in whose name we serve. Joel Green, in his book, The Gospel of Luke, said that a community that is hospitable to Christ is a community marked by the attention it gives to God's Word. In order for us to thrive and to be genuine, our acts of discipleship, whether con con <laughs> contemplative, active or otherwise, have to be grounded in our love for God and rooted in our love for God's Word so that we can be informed and inspired and in turn inspire others. Each Sunday as we gather together to worship, we are immersed again in the richness of God's Word, and we are invited to focus fully on Him in Christ. Like Martha, each of us are called to move from being distracted and worried by many things to the place where we are in touch with our Lord,
who is the source that gives us our love, our peace, and our energy, who energizes all that we do. As we are told in, in Acts, in him we live and move and have our being. It is being focused on him, on Jesus, that enables us to thrive, to love, and to serve others. However, to thrive and live with abundance and with joy, balance between doing and being is vital. Both are important and are inextricably intertwined. But in our hyper-communicative and busy world, where we suffer the disease of continuous partial attention, we need to find time to be like Mary, to sit in silence at the feet of our Lord and to listen to his voice. If you like, we need to give Jesus some prime time the kind of continuous attention that we give to our closest friends. Because as the reading from Colossians reminds us, it is in our Lord that all things are held together. Inevitably, whoever we are and whatever we do, we will each experience conflicts and frustrations, just as I did all those years ago and still do. And whether we see ourselves as God's activists or as his contemplatives, we all need to keep sitting at his feet, listening in silence as we enjoy being and doing. Amen.